wife. <laughs> uh, Sherry, were you um, one of the, um, when we had the last Native American showing? I, I was not. My brother Brian was one of the panelists. Oh, okay. okay. Daryl Beasley of Kentucky. Jason Fisk from Love. Barbara Landwehr from Concord. Mary Hampton from Dover. And I'm Cheryl Baker from Penn State. Claudia Ferber from Concord. So, um, so are are the four of you natives? Yes. Mm -hmm. Natives. What what tribe? Abena. 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 All of you. Mm -hmm. Do you um, are you familiar with the Wampanoag um, language? Reclamation bit. project, is that the right reword? I guess it would be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm probably more familiar with the Wampanoag work, but it was fun listening um, to this film because I haven't spent, none of us have uh, listened to them speaking, and yet uh, we were catching quite a few words that right. our language is mm -hmm. Algonquian. So, Bill and Sherry put on a language camp in oh. the summer uh -huh. for Abenak. Uh -huh. So it's interesting to see their work compared to mm -hmm. the work they've been doing. So. Well, where do you held your camp? Warner. In Warner? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how many people attend? This year we had 70 come through. 70? Yeah. Now, are they all Abenaki speakers or None some like me so. who might be interested in learning? A lot of... We have two living speakers. Yeah. Two mm -hmm. living speakers. Yeah. Um, are they older or little? Like All old, oh. and um, they were mm -hmm. six, even three years ago. Yeah. So they're all very elderly. Um, uh, one's in Quebec, and one's in Upper New York State. Yeah. Wow. So, are you both working hard to learn as much as you can from them? Well, it's, it's hard. <laughs> These people, are, in watching the movie, they're, they're very fortunate in a couple of respects. One respect is they have a closer community. So if you're going to speak, you have to communicate. They we're live yeah, closer. We're spread mm -hmm. out all over New Quebec. Hampshire, Vermont, Quebec. Um, and the other, I think, good thing is that nobody spoke, so they all learned it together. So you don't have to worry about you saying that wrong. <laughs> That's not the way. Yeah. And we, believe me, it's a nightmare. It, um, there's a lot of issues in native country. Um, we have one of the speakers that really wants to be a linguist when he grows up type of thing and is, he just has to, it's just, it's incredibly hard. Um, it put, it's, so you don't dare to speak too much because you might say it wrong. So where, it, but these people, they can speak any way they want to as long as they understand each other and they all learned it the same way at the same time. So they're all happy. And they can Probably they'll do very well. Mm -hmm. then. Well, it seems like with their work with MIT, they had kind of a science to it, though. I was fascinated when they reconstructed the Wampanoag word for dog mm -hmm. and how they went about doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and did they have an Abenaki, Abenaki call? Yeah, yeah. Western yeah. Abenaki. Well, yeah. West, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. is, uh, yeah. So it And we have plenty of document. Far. We have plenty of dictionaries that have been done. We have plenty of recordings of speakers that have been done. There's more, there's way more information than you'd ever need mm -hmm. to bring a language back or keep it keep it going, but um, we don't have the enthusiasm. It's not the language that's lost, it's the people. The that people. was the opening line. <laughs> yeah. And yeah it's, it's very true. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So, uh, we've, I think, done this camp for four years yeah. now. And we tried the first year. We tried the, the typical sit-down classroom style type thing. Didn't go well. Uh, I think we did that for two years, like that. Well, the second year, I guess we did some crafts and stuff. I we did know. crafts every year, but Ely was the teacher. Ely's the um, son of a, one of the fluent speakers who crossed over. And so he's kind of semi-fluent, and um, but he's the one who really wants to be a linguist and, or prove that he's equal to the linguist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of trauma. Um, I've worked in child welfare, so in a lot of ways, if you can think of the language like an abused child, and uh, so there's just a lot, a lot of trauma around it for people. And um, 
for Abenaki or sometimes we say Vinaki people, um, Odenak is the reserve in Quebec where many of the Penacook people went. So when Fritz Weatherby tells you all that in 1725 all of the Indians were gone from New Hampshire, he's talking about um, a large portion of the Penacook went to settle at what, what's known as Odenak now. But not all Abenaki left and went there, or all Penacook. You don't, you, neither do you find Abenaki in the historic record of New Hampshire. So, but after folks got to the village in Quebec, and then other refugees from New England, Nip monks and um, other tribal people, wound up settling there amongst them. At some point, they became called Abenaki there. And then the term backwashes. So everybody will say, oh, Abenaki you know, are the original Indians of New Hampshire. But it, you don't see that term used in New Hampshire history until um, like 1800s. You just don't find it in the historical record. So the language is very much the Penacook language that they that has stayed alive at Odenac with some other influences. It's most like the Penobscot language. We can speak the same. Um, and the Penobscot language is dead. There's no fluent speakers left in the Penobscot language. Passamaquoddy is very alive and um, Micmac and Maliseet. Maliseet is pretty close to our language too. But it was really interesting listening how many words he owes four. I was like, as soon as I said, I have a give a four. I go that one. <laughs> we play um, bingo. Bingo. That's yeah. our game. That's the game we like for the numbers. And, um, and the other, I mean, native languages were never written languages. So with the, any of these tribes, if, if it was the English coming in, recording what the words sounded, and then mm -hmm. the French might record what the words sound like, and the Dutch might record what the words sound like, and then you have different English dialects that hear it different, and then all the English spelt things different because a lot mm -hmm. of them just spelt the way it sounded to them, even if you look through the pound records and stuff. Right, it's freestyle know, English, yeah. yeah. You yeah. just wrote down. There were no spelling. Yeah, so Abenaki, I mean, you know, in this area, uh, which was Penacook, it was uh, had an R dialect. Eventually, that disappeared out of the Abenaki language, and now it's an L dialect. And what she was talking about the L dialect. Did you yeah. hear her say that yeah. he put an L in there, and we didn't ha we didn't speak an L dialect. Yeah. We had yeah. a, it should have been an N. What What does that mean? <laughs> I, I didn't understand. There was no that there was no L's in our words uh -huh. or L L sounds. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were R in sounds. Our yes. No, in our language, there were no R's. So Mary yes, becomes there were Lolly. R's. There was yeah. the Penobscot. There was an R dialect. <laughs> they came in. <laughs> there was an R dialect at one time, yeah. but today, uh -huh. right, if I say uh, Kwai Indilwazi Sali Gould, Sherry Sali, oh, so there is no R now in Abenaki, so you would replace it that with an L. Yeah. But, but yes, originally it was an R, had an R. It was an R dialect, mm -hmm. and then they switched that to an L. But I, and I think a lot of that was when the, the Penacook went to Odenag, and there were Hurons that went to Odenek. It was a what refugee is, camp. Uh, That's what I was going to say. Is what is Odenek? It's a it's a it's a reserve in Canada, but it, it started out. The it, was a, it was a Jesu Jesuit um, outpost or whatever. But it was so the natives went as refugees, that, and they they mixed and sort of came up with their own language that everybody could understand. So the Hurons are talking to the the Panacook and. There's a lot of Penobscot, Maliseet, so it all evolved into one in kind which up in that they all could sort of understand, and it turned into the R's got <coughs> dropped, and the L's uh, came into being. So there's all that, um, but we have dictionaries with the R dialect that were done by Abenakis. So that's the proof. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That things evolved. And then you got uh, the linguists got involved, and that's a whole other because um, linguists aren't really speakers; they're just studiers they're of scholars, mm -hmm. and they're looking for certain things. Um, 